Welcome to City Week, ladies and gentlemen. Today I'm sitting down with the homeownership manager from Dashville LaGrange, Elia Baltus. Elia, welcome to the show. Thank you, Elton. Well, it's a pleasure to sit down with you here to talk about some of the wonderful things that are going on with Dash mm -hmm. and, and, and you particularly and helping people to realize the American dream of mm -hmm. becoming homeowners. Nope. Uh, talk a little bit about your job for us, if you don't mind. Uh, well, my job is to implement those programs and um, develop the programs and also develop the curriculum and different programs. Um, and um, also the, to teach the classes. And of course we do the uh, work with the lenders and um, all the different real estate community partners to get people, you know, what, what depends on what stage they are to get them to meet, like you said, their, their dream. Uh -huh. So their dream may not necessarily be home ownership. Their dream may be um, just to get their finances in order. Uh -huh. So a multitude um, of things that you all help right. people with. Exactly. And I can remember days of old, you know, we would have people coming in and out. Uh -huh. and, and you have some people that were a little bit more ready than other people, if that's correct, it's politically exactly. more ready. That's always the same. <laughs> that's right. Well, let me It's and, always and, the same. And so you mm -hmm. guys, let me ask you, you still offer classes there to help the general public uh, understand credit and how to yes. rebuild the credit. Talk a little bit yes. about that if you Well, we mind. still um, offer the physical classes. Okay. And, you know, give technologists changing like we were talking about. Uh -huh. So we still offer the physical classes and a lot of those are for, you know, of course we have a housing rehabilitation program. A lot of those are, are um, what we call seniors. Mm -hmm. uh, um, and so they're not very computer savvy and stuff. So a lot of them, you know, they say, well, no, I, I, you know, I can't do that in the computer. So they're coming to the classes. There may be some loan program that um, product that uh, still is not accepting, but mm. I think most of them are accepting on like online. So we do online ones also. Oh, okay, well, very and good. Stuff. And you're talking about uh, programs, and I mm. know that there's a, a new program that you wanted mm. to talk particularly about mm -hmm. today, and that is the FHA or Back to Work program. Right. Talk a little bit about, and I know that okay. there's a number of programs right. out there, there you know, financing, financing options, but talk a little bit about okay. what is Back to Work program. Well, the FHA Back to Work program, it's actually been around since August of 2013. Mm -hmm. It wasn't really marketed that much out there, but it, you know, kind of after all the, you know, the aftermath of all the economic thing that happened, and um, I think that, you know, counseling is more important than ever. Because, it, you know, we, you kind of have that unbiased third party that is giving people those resources, those options. Um, we're assessing their budgets. Um, so we're kind of uh, helping them to avoid scams. Mm -hmm. So those are just some of the benefits of that program. But I think that FHA is, you know, they're, they're fully committed to, to say we're going to evaluate these borrowers that um, maybe during that time of those events, um, that they had a severe reductions in income that could be by employment or um, or job reduction or it could be both mm -hmm. and they were not able to make those monthly mortgage payments oh okay so okay. they probably either had a short sale or you know pre foreclosure sales so they probably had a deed in lieu or they or they had a foreclosure themselves or it could be that they had to go and um, file bankruptcy in order to restructure uh, some of their debts that you know that they had so you know FHA recognizes now you have this group of people that you know because you, you know as well as I do some people just don't pay their bills <laughs> That's right. you know some people mm -hmm. just have um, you know that mentality of not keeping their credit up right and so and, and it could be that that they just don't have that knowledge yet so that's one of the things we do is give people that knowledge, that knowledge. Right. but these group of people did all the things right you know, okay. they did, they paid their bills, they saved money, they had savings and stuff. But well, one of these things helped them, it, what it did was it created a, a credit, a bad credit for them. So FHA realizes, let's look at these borrowers that had this specific stuff. And, you know, they realized their credit histories probably don't fully reflect their ability to pay mm -hmm. okay. or their, you know, propensity So they gave them an opportunity. Is so what yeah, it's a, re and so this, program kind of says you can buy within a year if you have these certain things instead of waiting you know you have to wait three years or whatever uh -huh. once you uh -huh. have uh, all of these other things we're going to let you buy within a year okay talk about some so, of those qualification requirements that okay. the person in this um, pool well one of the things is the fha has always had that um the, you know they, they put things in the mortgage letters so they've always had uh, extenuating circumstances what mm -hmm. we call okay so that what they did was in this one they they added 
um, what they call an economic event to those extenuating circumstances. So that um, economic event could be, and let's say they documented it, um, and it was a result during that period of that significant household income loss, um, they demonstrated that they recovered from that event. So now even though they're still, they're saying, well, now I'm, I'm together, but I have to wait two more years or, you know, they, they have already recovered from it. They've saved money again, mm -hmm. and they've paying their bills on time again, um, and they've completed that requirement of that housing counseling for that FHA mortgage loan. Okay. Let me ask, so, so is that like mm -hmm. one of the first things that they need to do is make sure to kind of reinstate it themselves? Mm -hmm. And then how does someone get started in this program? Um, well, if you get started, you want to go see a lender. Most oh. people um, will, you know, because most people aren't reading these mortgage letters, of course. So, <laughs> But a lot of people know, hey, you know, I want to buy. And the ones that, that I have gotten um, pretty much lost everything. Mm -hmm. So, you, you know, our job is to document that. And so, you know, one, for example, he made $180,000 to work for a bank. Um, and so he was one of the, the big financial guys and their bank merged and they just cut a lot of people out. So uh -huh. he literally went, because his wife worked too, uh -huh. went from 180000 to 25000 Oh my. So, but he had savings. They uh -huh. did all this stuff right. But during that time, um, they used up their savings. And then he actually, uh, we documented that he actually worked in other jobs. He was making like 35000 in one job. So he wasn't trying to find his job again. Mm -hmm. um, so they went through all of those stuff that they had to do, saved, used up their retirements. And then they got to that point where they finally just did a short sale. Mm. So they, you know, so it was all due to that one Good economic that event. Absolutely. And I'm so, sure you probably mm -hmm. have, you may be single, I'm gonna say a lot of people now coming into mm -hmm. your office, but I'm sure that you know during the time when it really tanked, did you see mm -hmm. a lot of traffic in your office with mm -hmm. people needing the assistance and trying to restructure their budgets or yes. get their finances in order? Yes, and I think um, and, and I think you probably know that we went from not doing as much pre-purchase because we do a lot of other stuff mm -hmm. to creating our um, credit restoration and rebuilding program, our financial fitness program, uh -huh. because that really is where we needed to focus at that time. Right. So part of our goal is to refocus what it is they need. So mm -hmm. we were not doing a, a whole lot of that at all. Okay. All right. you know, Talk a little bit about some of the counseling that they have to go through, mm -hmm. Ailey, if you don't mind, because I know that um, there are some counseling requirements. What are yeah. about the minimum well, requirements? Well, the housing counseling requirements are really specific in those mortgage letters. Okay. And so one of them is, now when I say when they go to see a lender, mm -hmm. um, they cannot have a loan application. But they go to a lender, you know, they'll do that prequal, and That's they right. and, and they have guidelines that they need to look at to make sure that they would fit into this program. Okay. Then they have to give them a list of at least three housing HUD approved housing counseling agencies, mm -hmm. um, and of course we, you know, we don't have three in this area. <laughs> so, um, but they do give them the list, and then they have to come to us. So they have to have that minimum that education they have to have that um, minimum one hour which is usually a little bit more at least 30 days prior to or no more than six months mm -hmm. from that loan application okay. I've only had this happen to me once yeah. where a client literally came and somehow they him and the lender you know didn't understand the whole Thing, but we did our process okay. and found out that he did have a loan application. They literally have to sign to us that they Don't do not have a, have a loan application. Okay. So they cannot have started so, a loan process with yes, a lender yes. prior to coming to you. They cannot okay. have that loan application, period. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so we, of course, have our guidelines. Right. We can't miss our guidelines and we have to do what HUD says. So long story short, they ended up having to close that and they came back again and did it again. They just, it's a bad thing because they were actually going to close like in that week. Oh my, oh my. But so, you know. Important point for them to yes. realize. Absolutely. Exactly. Let me ask you, what, mm -hmm. now I know a lot of time people think and when you go to these classes, da da da, mm -hmm. you know, you do have to make some type of uh, a fee payment. What are the fee for your classes that you all offer? Okay. Pay? Well, we do when if a client, I, I guess, is coming through Dash, let's say you come and you say, I don't know, I want to buy a home, I don't even know what, where I'm at. So th that person, and, and it depends on once we do an assessment, they may not, they might want to buy a home, but they may not even be in that program. Right. So, but if they are, 
Um, then we have, uh, we use the uh, HUD income limits for Troop County. And mm -hmm. if they're not in Troop County, because we do also do Heard, Meriwether, Coweta, a lot of other counties, and we would use the statewide income limits. So we've created in 2010, we created um, a fee scale and waiver policy. Okay. So we'll use that to do that. Now that's for people that are coming through our program. Lender referrals, which are in part of this program or somebody that might be uh, USDA and they just need the certificate, what we call them lender referrals. Um, they would of course not need one-on-one -on -one counseling. Okay. That requirement of back to work requires them to have that. Okay. But USDA may not, but they want the education. Then they would go to either a physical one or an online, which they would pay $125 okay. All right. for that. All right. Now, and I heard you mention earlier about some the one-on-one -on -one counseling. Mm -hmm. uh, now, for these individuals, can they do the group setting, or what other methods of counseling do you all offer for someone that is a lender referral? Okay. Well, um, they can come to our physical. Okay. Uh, now, are you talking about the counseling or the education? Yeah, the counseling. Um, well, at HUD allows us different methods uh -huh. and uh, so we can do teleconferencing because we do like I said some that are not in Troop County okay. uh, so we do teleconferencing in person we can do Skyping okay. we can do um, any method that um, are approved by the parties okay. so but those are kind of the basic ones that HUD approves okay. right. and so we can do either you know any of them oh, well, so that's pretty good, good. absolutely uh, and Ely, our time is about to escape huh. before I know before, it's always it's too always quick. too quick <laughs> that's right before we finish up, because this is a lot of great information, I, it, it is a great is, program, is. back to work <laughs> program. Give people your contact mm -hmm. information yes. where they may reach you mm -hmm. in the event that someone's okay. listening or they may know someone yes. that want to contact. Go ahead and give okay. me your contact information. Uh, well, my phone number, Elia Baltese, and my number is 706-298-0582. Okay. 0582. All right. Well, very That's great. great. And you're located at Dash and Dash Lagrange, 1200 Fourth Avenue. Okay. You can call me and we'll get them in. Get you in. All right. Well, Elia, mm -hmm. time has expired on us. I but know. I definitely That's want okay. to get you to come back I again <laughs> and talk about some of the success stories that uh, people have mm -hmm. uh, uh, acquired going through this program. So we definitely oh. want to have you come back. Okay. Okay. We right. will. Well, thank, thank you very you so much. much. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, stay tuned. We're back for more City Week in just a moment. City Week, ladies and gentlemen. Now I'm sitting down with another guest from Dashville Lagrange, the community organizer, Ben Wheeler. Ben, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Well, it's a pleasure to sit down with you as well. I just had your one of your co-workers on, Elia Baltis. He talked about the Back to Work program. It yeah. sounds like a very great program in our community to be able to offer to our citizens and hoping a lot of them will take advantage of it fully. And, and, and you're a person here that I, I see you walking down Jefferson Street in the community and, and I, See some kids walking with you a lot of times as well. Uh, I venture to say some of them are yours, some of them are not yours, right. but it just goes to show that you're doing a wonderful job in the community. Talk a little bit about your role in the community, Ben. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I have a role walk right in front of your mom's house that's quite right. often. That's right. <laughs> I meet her um, quite often. Yeah, so um, my role in the, uh, in the community really is uh, focuses on um, the, the social aspect. Of, uh, of our neighborhoods and our communities and things like that. DASH has always focused on um, housing uh -huh. um, and has always had a focus on neighborhood revitalization. And yes, housing is a strong aspect. Is it an asset, you know, is, is it an aspect of our um, programs that, you know, all of our programs uh, reflect and is important. But so is that social aspect, that building the relationships, social, you know, building the social networks. And so a big part of aspect of what I do is building those relationships, finding out what neighbors want. Uh, we, use a, we use a form of community development called ASSET, A-S-S-E-T, based uh -huh. community development, where we ask the questions, you know, simple questions that have uh, meaning behind it and asking folks to say, hey, what would you want to make happen in your neighborhood? What would you like to see happen? 
um, so they, they become empowered to take on the roles. Um, and so that dash can not only work in Hillside and maybe work in other neighborhoods as well. Absolutely. And you know, I, I see the change that have happened in the communities there. Yeah. Jefferson Street, Lincoln Street, South Lee Street, uh, just to name a few. But I know it spreads out broader than that. And again, I, you know, I see, you know, the kids come, they like they're engaged in various things. What were some of the things that you all offered the young people in that area over the summer, Ben? Yeah, one of the things that we've been focusing on recently, um, and actually been focused actually with uh, LaGrange College, I don't want to uh, forget those guys, mm -hmm. especially the uh, servant scholars coming through, um, is an idea that actually comes out of Sarasota called the uh, scavenger hunt. You know? mm -hmm. Typically a scavenger hunt, you place the things to find. <laughs> but our idea is that our neighborhoods are rich with ideas and rich of dreams, rich of things that are just interesting to find out. You know, it might be a muscadine grove or it might be a, you know, a, a trail that a kid would like. And a lot of our kids in our neighborhoods have incredible ideas. They have simple ideas, but often they're forgotten in the community planning aspects of our, uh, in the development. Mm -hmm. And so we encourage our neighborhood uh, kids and also our parents to take part. Um, and it's also, it's fascinating to actually see some parents actually say, oh, that's what you like to do too. <laughs> you know, and so it's, it's real cool because our kids have, you know, have incredible cool ideas. A lot of times they're a lot simpler, a lot easier to obtain things that could happen, you know, really easily uh -huh. um, in our community. And so we use this idea of a, called a scavenger hunt. It was really successful in a, in a neighborhood down in S Sarasota. Uh -huh. And uh, yeah, we enjoy doing the same thing. Well, very good. We're looking forward to some of the kids. Unfortunately, all of my nieces and nephews that were over there, they've grown up and gone there. But I do still see, like I said, a lot of the kids uh, coming on down, up and down the sidewalks. In. Uh -huh. And I must say, I can tell that the even uh, I think a couple of years ago, you guys placed trash cans out in the area. Right. And I've noticed that the, 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 you know, just the cleanliness of the area, there's something else I think that can be attributed to you and the, and the organizers there in the community. Talk a little about that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we we believe that, you know, if we're going to change, because litter is always one of those issues that comes up. Yes. It comes across, you know, in the city council meetings and county commission right. meetings, it comes up quite a bit. And I'm always, I, I guess, you know, maybe it's because I, I, my wife is a school teacher, maybe my, my mom being a school teacher, but I always believe that kids often are our future. Mm -hmm. And our kids are going to be the ones who can change the way that we think and things like that. And I see it with, especially like even with my own three-year-old, who says, anytime they sees trash, she's like, Daddy, there's somebody throwing trash on the ground. <laughs> somebody pick And so we go back and pick it up and we uh -huh. go and throw it away. And, you know, and it begins with that simple idea, that simple idea that kids are, you know, our future and kids can also create some of that change. Absolutely. And so uh, we encourage our kids to uh, pick up. And so we try to do that through some of our scavenger hunts. We try to, you know, bring that little trash bag along, maybe that bag that, you know, you get from the, um, the grocery store and say, hey, let's just pick up a couple, you know, pieces here and there while we're going around asking questions. Absolutely. And talking about the scavenger hunt and everything, what are some of the things that you all have done? I know this is your first summer, right? What were some of the things that you all look for? Yeah, one of, the, um, one of the biggest aspects we look for, and by the way, the, what, what, the cool thing is, is that we found out about a great website uh, through uh, some students at the MIT uh -huh. Design Center there, and they use uh, telephones. You, everybody has cell phones these right. days. Everybody has a cell phone. Everybody has the ability to text, <laughs> take, you know, make phone calls and like that. Uh -huh. um, and so <coughs> one of the things is that, you know, a lot of our neighborhood kids, they, they just want to just come out and play a lot of times. They want to have that opportunity, a place where they can play, so like one of the big interests right now is green space, which oh. it's kind of interesting because that's a big thing that's happening within the larger community. I've heard it from uh, Chief Deckmar and Mayor Thornton. I've heard it from others that mm -hmm. are also interested. And so it's interesting that, you know, I didn't tell them that. Right. That's something they, they, came. they came up with them themselves. They were, they were the ones who said, yeah, it'd be great if we had a place to play. We had right. a place to, you know, uh, <clears throat> and we have a couple places where they can do that, but not a lot of uh, uh, like slides or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So. We're just trying to look into those kind of examples of saying, okay, what can we do? What can we do to make things, you know, make it, make it a little bit better? It's awesome to hear and to know that the kids just want to get an opportunity to come out and to play. And, and, and I think the other aspect of that, making sure that it's someplace that's safe yeah. for the young people to come out and enjoy <coughs> and, and that the family members can feel safe mm -hmm. and bringing their kids to as well. So we definitely look forward to working with Dash yeah. uh, in, in bringing some of that to fruition as well. Absolutely. Now, and you also want to talk today, I, I think that you all have some programs coming up here a little bit later on in, in the month of September that you want to talk about. Coffee and conversations. Talk a little bit about that for us. Absolutely, absolutely. Just like I was saying about the, uh, the green space. Um, one thing that uh, we've, uh, the last couple months, I've been uh, working with a servant scholar, um, Adam Carpenter. He's a student at the college. He's a junior this year. 
And um, Adam came to me and said, hey, I, I would love to learn about, you know, I hear about what you guys are doing over Hillside. I want to take part. I want to do some things around art and music and, you know, just conversation. And I said, okay, how are we going to do that? You know, and that's always my next question. <laughs> how are we right. going to do it? Because, I mean, yeah, I definitely could come up with my own ways of doing that. And I could probably create it and it would be, you know, put my own stamp of approval on. But I'm always trying to figure out, you know, what is that organic, indigenous way that could be created? And so um, at the same time, uh, some good friends of mine from down in America's Cafe Cappuccino came down and they, they said, hey, you know, we had this, uh, we're really trying to build uh, our brand by inviting people to have conversations around coffee. And we we're like, hmm, that's interesting. That's kind of the same conversation I'm having over here. And so, um, so yeah, so later this fall, uh, later this September, um, we're just going to nail down some dates real soon. Uh, we're going to have an open night uh, for when the, the folks from Cafe 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 Cappuccino are going to come up and share how coffee can build conversation. Um, it's similar to, I've heard other examples of in other communities where pie was okay. the example. Mm -hmm. um, I've heard even down in New Orleans, I've heard of folks using um, stickers as a way <laughs> of building community, you know, starting conversation. So you know, just starting off with something, starting off with something that, you know, is a kind of that catalyst, that thing that kind of starts the movement mm -hmm. um, to get people, you know, create, uh, start talking. And yeah, our focus is still in Hillside, but we also invite others from outside the community to come in because just like we might be interested in the uh, in green space, but apparently others are. I mean, that's, a, that's an incredible thing that's happening over in uh, Calumet, yeah. in the neighborhood uh, with Dr. Tucker and, um, and his group is that, you know, there's others that are interested, you know, there's uh, city leaders that are interested. And so we're inviting, you know, city leaders and other residents, mm -hmm. uh, community members and community leaders to come in and say, hey, let's start, let's start off with a cup of coffee. There you go. Just absolutely. start off with a cup of coffee and go from there and see where it takes us. That's right. And open uh, dialogue. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Dialogue. Absolutely. And we're hoping to do this on a monthly basis. Okay. Um, well, we'll probably take the month of December off, but we're going to go for September, October and uh, November and then come back in January again and get started again okay. and just continue to just foster those kind of conversations. Well, very good. And, and, uh, and again, I know that you guys do a wonderful job there in the community. And I guess when we can bring people from the outside of the community in, you get a, a, a greater uh, array of ideas that can do, take place and be mimicking other communities as well. Exactly. Um, yeah, but they're also always indigenous of LaGrange. Of LaGrange. Absolutely. Or Troop County. Absolutely, absolutely. And one of the things I wanted to talk a little bit about the, the bag of coffee is because I guess me myself not being a coffee drinker, yeah. this one's a little bit different from the original cup of coffee. Talk a little bit about this coffee per se, the original coffees. Yeah, so one of the things uh, we've been doing this, Adam and I have been doing this summer is just starting off by asking the question, you know, what would you want to happen in your neighborhood? What mm -hmm. would you like to happen in LaGrange or Troop County? Um, and one of the, the obstacles we were trying to figure out is how, how do we make that cup of coffee? How do we make a good <laughs> cup of coffee? And uh, the two of us had uh, heard about this idea called cold brew. Uh -huh. And cold brew is just a, uh, it's a non-heated cup of coffee. It is a, uh, it's the same kind of coffee, it's the same kind of grounds and uh -huh. everything like that. It's, it's grounded a different way. Okay. Um, but we use a, a, a nut milk bag, which is similar to your cheesecloth. Mm -hmm. And uh, we put the grounds in there and let it seat for 12 hours in a large half gallon uh, mason jar. And um, yeah, and so actually <laughs> it's a little bit less acidic. Uh -huh. um, so folks that, you know, like myself, who have a little bit of acid reflux, it's, a, it's really easier on the, uh, on the stomach. Uh -huh. um, and, um, but yeah, we, uh, we, we found that it's a, actually a fun, easy way to do it. People love the jars. Yeah, I bet so. <laughs> yeah. I'm like a lot of people like, tea, huh? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's, it's very similar to your uh, sun teas. Yeah, absolutely. Well, great. You know, and, and I think that would be wonderful, uh, you know, coffee and conversation. I can remember one of the council members uh, some days gone by used to have eggs and issues, which was same, uh, similar to yeah. what you, you're doing here, where you would just invite the community to come out and talk about things going on in the community. Because we have to understand that we live in the community, and if it's going to get better, it has to start with us as the individuals in the communities. Exactly, exactly. One of my favorite uh, uh, community developers is uh, John, uh, John McKnight, and he, he often talks about that the, uh, your, the challenges that we face today a lot of times can be solved by the people that live within the community. That's right. And so I'm a big, firm believer in that. I believe that our neighborhoods, and a lot of it is, is just that people just need an opportunity to talk. To talk. You know, right. and um, yeah, I'm willing to say, hey, if coffee's not it, let's find out what is. <laughs> that's right. You know? Absolutely. Maybe in the conversation we find out that, I don't know, fried chicken is right. what. <laughs> Maybe right. it's. Hey, food's always a draw. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Maybe food is yeah. that thing. Maybe it's hot dogs. Uh -huh. I don't know. Yeah. It could be, you know, anything. I mean, um, 
So what, what brings people together? What brings people together to the same table? Bring up those con kind of conversations. Absolutely. Well, Ben, again, you guys do a wonderful job there. We thank you for all that you do you. for the kids in the hillside and the surrounding area. If someone was watching and wanted to get in touch with you, sure. give them your contact information, please. All right. First of all, my telephone number is 706-298-0585, 706-298-0585. Or also my email is uh, bwheeler, W-H-E-E-L-E-R, at dashlagrange.org. Okay. Well, Ben, it's a pleasure sitting down yeah. with you today, and we look for great things coming out of coffee and conversation. Yeah. All right. Thanks for being on. Appreciate it. Thank all you. Right. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, stay tuned. We'll be back for more City Weekend in just a moment. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us for City Week this week. My guests have been from Dashville LaGrange, Elia Baltes, the Home Ownership Manager, and she talked about the Back to Work program that's provided by H FHA. So if there's someone out there that's interested in learning more about that program, she gave you her contact information, so give her a call over there and let's see if we can't make you become a happy homeowner. Also, ladies and gentlemen, I had on from Dashville Grange, the community organizer, Ben Wheeler, as he talked about a program coming up in later in September, Coffees and Conversation. So make sure that you come out, share your ideas. Who knows? You might see some of those implemented in the community. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope that you've enjoyed both those interviews. And as always, I want to invite you back for more of City Week.